Mexican chef. We got a we got an interview for you guys this time. You uh, guys are in for a real treat. This guy is the real deal. Real deal, definitely. I mean, um, member of a legendary punk rock um, band, vegan. Been in jail, lived on the streets, was a Hare Krishna. It doesn't get any better than this. I mean, but this guy is, you know, he's the truth, and, and everybody needs to hear what he's got to say. He's also an amazing athlete. He's, he's, I mean, Iron he's Man. an inspiration to us, and we know he's going to inspire you guys. So, <laughs> without further ado, John Joseph, let's do it. Check it out. How's, how's everything? Everything is everything in this crazy, crazy world we're in, right? You believe, like, the last four months, man? Craziness. Insane. Insane. So thank you, thank you, thank you for doing 100%, that. 100%, you know? brother, you know that, man. I love what you do. And thank you, thank it you. It ain't even like you was all about, I don't know what the Instagram, we don't roll like that. I'm 58 <laughs> years old, kid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't go with no Instagram etiquette. If, some, if I got something to say, I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give uh -huh. me a shout. All right, good, because we want to get into that as far as, like, because it's definitely a, a different breed of, uh, I don't even know what the breed is now, uh, on, the, on the male side. And yeah. as, as me personally. <laughs> uh, this is where we're going with yeah, this. <laughs> as me personally feeling kind of like, a, uh, like an alien sometimes. But we'll, we'll get there. Uh, well, all you got to do is listen to what Dave Chappelle said about all of that. What happened? Because he broke it down. Which one? Oh, only one of his latest. Uh... No, it wasn't the latest one. It was the one when he came back from Africa. Oh. And then, like, everybody was saying he lost his mind and all this. But he, he started dropping science on, see, Hollywood, and the, they control everything, right? So whatever they're projecting that this is what's cool, uh -huh. that's what the masses are doing. Yeah. So he said, why do they want every black comedian or actor to dress up in drag. Yeah. So, yeah. and then he goes down the rabbit hole of demasculinizing de de black men in America and yeah. the rest of it. But it's deep. I think we saw that one, did we? we saw yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I think I might have showed you that one. I think it was the Oprah interview. If you look, every single black comedian, even from Flip Wilson back in the day, Geraldine he had. If y'all remember the Flip Wilson show, that might be before your time, but they did the same thing to him. And he had to come up with a female Geraldine, him and drag, you know, like, but Dave Chappelle went, went deep on some shit, man. He, what he's saying, it, it blew my mind because like, I knew him when he first started out. I used to deliver weed to him, man. <laughs> oh yeah yeah he was playing to like five people in the boston comedy club man wow and his agent from tristar pictures was the one that called me this guy matt and he's like that guy is gonna be a fucking superstar man oh yeah yo i swear to god and then i, I had all the bike gear on i would go down to the basement of the club and give him the weed and then i would do, and then he lived in some condo over here and then like and I would deliver it looking like a professional cyclist, right? And then when he put out half baked, I'm like, the delivery guy was dressed like a cyclist. I'm oh, like, wow. <laughs> I'll take that. Uh -huh. That's awesome. <laughs> anyway, that's awesome. Yeah. I will say, you want to get rocking. Speaking of down there, and uh, you see my shirt that I got on right now. I love it. Village. If I, I go with the Spanish version, Loisada, the Lower East Side. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> So if I'm, I'm from out of town, I'm, I come in, it's like the 70s. I got a, a, a sweater on, you know, and my nice, uh, my nice uh, dickies on, and I'm, I'm walking down. Um, this is in the 70s? This is, <laughs> seven, this is in the 70s. Chef's got her poodle in her hand, and we're like, hi, we're, we're, we're here in the, uh, the Lower East Side. What, what, how does that go down for us? How, what are we going to see? Oh, I thought you meant that you was on the Lower East Side. No, no. I'm picture this. Picture it. Oh. We walk in from out of town. I got my, my sweater over my shoulder, shoulders. 
honestly, if they saw that, you would get robbed very quick. <laughs> <laughs> because I was in uh, I was in St. John's home for boys. I grew up in Foster Homes. If you know, I can I curse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let it oh. go. So I grew up in fucked up foster homes. My father was a professional boxer. He boxed on the custom auto over here at Gramercy Gym from Ireland. Wow. And he, you know, he did some bad stuff, man. He almost murdered my mom and she fell into depression. They took us away. So like I went through all these foster homes, like bad one after another. And then one for six years, that was terrible. So then they closed that and put me in St. John's. The spot for Home for boys in Rockaway Beach. We up in Spofford or anything? Yeah, so then I used to uh, traffic drugs and come to the Lower East Side in 1976. And then 1977, I was a heroin mule. So I had to meet these junkies connection. It was a Spanish cat named Papo. And then he told me the first time I came down here, the reason they call it Alphabet City, because it goes by the avenue, A, B, C, D. He goes, if you come out, if you come down here and you don't know nobody and you're trying to come down here and cop or do whatever, then he said, Avenue A stands for adventurous, Avenue B stands for bold, C, you're crazy, and Avenue D, you are dead. And wow. that was the reality. Tomka Square Park was murder scenes, man, constantly, people ODing. And it went from in the 60s, because I do a whole history tour down here, too. Yeah, we were on we, it. We went on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the 60s was like hippies and Prabhupada chanting Hare Krishna with Allen Ginsberg and all those guys. And then the 70s just brought the drugs. Like, you know, and, and with the drugs comes the violence. And it was also the gentrification, the early stages of it, because what you had going on in the Bronx, the South Bronx, uh, if you watch the movie that my friend Shan did, um, it's called uh, Rub Rubble Kings, R-U-B-B-L-E, Kings. And it was how the gang started in the South Bronx, and then they were getting paid by the Jewish landlords to torch the buildings. Uh, and that's how all the buildings were getting burned down. They called them Jewish barbecues. And then when they lost everything, the gang started, rock, like, the shit that you saw go down in the Warriors, the movie, they took an actual incident that went, that actually happened. The gangs had this, like, big meeting to try to squall the shootings and the murders and the gang fights, and somebody shot one of the leaders of one of the main gangs, and then it just spun out. And that's how Warriors took that from an actual event in the South Bronx. And then they started having these parties where it was like to quell the violence and all the gangs got together and then they hooked up a turntable and then somebody started scratching on the record and then somebody got on the mic and it talks about the whole birth of hip hop and that culture about how it came out of, uh, you know, the South Bronx and all these rough neighborhoods, you know, even Alphabet City was with the punk rock, what I was so then, so then more involved with going to CBGB's in 77 and Max's Kansas City and like, you know. So how do you go from, so you were, you were a, drug, a drug mule, as you said, and then how, how does it progress after that? Like, how do you, because. Well, we it's called incarceration. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got popped in 78 right before my birthday the end of like the last week of September I had racked up cases uh two drug sales to undercovers so the one was a drug sale to an undercover no yo I'm making a movie about this shit like when all this clears up like I wrote the script for this whole this one summer of punk rock it was called the summer of punk in 77 and i was on the streets but like there was this guy jimbo sterling he was a big heroin dealer heroin addict but like had a job like everybody could back then it wasn't you didn't spin out there was people that could maintain a habit they got to do two three bags in the morning to get right 
a little taste in the afternoon, something at night, and they hold down jobs. I used to sell to those people, suit and ties, coming and buying bundles. And then the thing was, he had me work at, he had a hot dog stand, right? And a hamburger stand. So when you got off the train on 98th Street in Rockaway Beach, right? And you wanted to go to Rockaway Playland, the amusement park where everybody went. You had to walk by his hot dog stand. So if you knew what time it was, you could buy a hot dog, but instead of a hot dog in the bun, it was a nickel bag or a dime of weed. Ooh, okay. So we kept selling to these people and then they turned out that they bought like all this weight and then they popped us. That was my first case. And, you know, I went back onto the streets after getting out of lockup, and they took me back. I split. And then I caught another case breaking into a supermarket through the roof. I love how you said they, they <laughs> took me back. Yeah, no, St. John's did. Oh, okay, uh, okay. But St. John's, they had to remand you for somewhere where you're locked up. Uh, but, gotcha. So that it's like you're, you're on, um, you know, like you're like, it, you're waiting for your court case to come and stuff like that. So I split on that first case, so I had a bench warrant. And yeah. then I got popped again for the breaking through the supermarket roof to get in the safe. <laughs> and they brought me back. St. John's took me back wait, again. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Bring it back to the supermarket now. Oh, Look. so they had a pharmacy in there. So there was this guy and he's like yeah this dude told me the combination to the safe he works there so all we got to do is go through the skylight and and hacksaw the bars and then and this guy was a this guy was a ranger in the army and like that's how i met him he went he went awol from the army and stole a bunch of guns and he he took them out little by little in in the gun manuals he cut uh ho he, holes in the book and he was sneaking out parts to assemble m16s wow. yeah he was he was a maniac this guy joey keen he just died so he was a paratrooper ranger so he's like yeah we're gonna repel into the fucking store like once we get the bars so we cut the bars and we, and we were tying off to like the the pipe there on the roof and then all of a sudden these floodlights hit us Right? And it's like, oh. both of you assholes, get down. Oh. <laughs> and 5-0 had the whole fucking place surrounded. Well, I found out that my friend, the ranger, had had sex with that guy's girlfriend. So so he set him up with a fake oh, combination God, you can't and shit set up. him up to be busted by the fucking cops. Wow. You can't make this shit so up. So was it, were you just like game for like, was it just like a money thing for you? Oh, I was just like, I was buck wild, man. I was 14 and 76. I was like, whatever I have to do to survive. I mean, you know, I didn't get into that street walk and shit. I was like, for lack of a better word, a street thug. Like, I would never rob old ladies. I, like, I would do heists. Like, I went on to the streets, and then I met these maniacs. They're both murderers. They both, and they both got murdered re, uh, in the last 20 years. But Junior Nuts and Dougie Holston. So 116 in Rockaway was like the place, man. Everybody hung out there, the Ramones, the Hells Angels, people from all over the city came to 116. It was a circle. They called it the circle because it was like a cement circle. And everybody sat around in a circle, passing fucking joints and drinking and playing Frisbee on the beach. And, and I was selling fucking speed and like, I, I split. So then I met these cats and we started going up town to Bell Harbor and going into the garages. And they liked me because they only had to lift the garage up a little bit. <laughs> and then I go underneath with a flashlight and see what they got. Chainsaws, lawn mowers, bicycles. Wow. We were taking everything and wheeling it down to the beach in the middle of the night below the dunes, taking on the train at 116 to Greenpoint, Brooklyn, to a fence, an old Polish guy named Pops. And he would fucking buy, you walk in there, there's hair dryers, fucking clothes dryers, washers. TVs, like he was a fence in, in Greenpoint. 
and we would take him. He had a list, so we had to go fill out what, get what he needed on the list. So I did that for like a month, and then they stole a car, and we crashed it at the end into these people's house. Oh my god! <laughs> like in the middle of the night. <laughs> Fucking nuts, man, yo! I, I can't even believe I'm still alive. Like the shit oh, I did. You, you be high at the during? Oh, the high as a motherfucking kite. <laughs> we stole this car because the keys. This old drunk dude was like passed out halfway in the car, halfway out the car. Junior just said, "Get out of here!" Like pulled him out the car, and then we, as he's driving, he reaches under and he goes, "Yo!" And it was a fucking a quarter Jack Daniels, unopened. <laughs> well, we started drinking that shit, and Junior Nuts was driving. We got to go over the Marine Parkway Bridge. Nobody had money. So we were gonna, we couldn't get through the toll. So he whips the fucking Yui at like 50 miles an hour, like side skids, we're all fucked up. And the cops just start chasing us oh. back into Rockaway. And he jumps over the divider. The cop, all their tires blew out and we go into uh, the house, like a garage into the fucking house oh. and ran out all bloody and ran to the beach and got away but wow. after that <laughs> union nut stabbed this girl in the neck like like 10 times with a bottle he, he, he was crazy oh my God. and uh so they had to split and i had to split because they knew that i was their friend and they like i seen him do it that night it just came he would just snap out of nowhere and just he'd be talking he'd say you got a light and then she's like, no, I don't have a light. And he's like, why are you being a bitch? And starts stabbing him with a fucking <laughs> bottle in the neck. I was like, I got to nowhere. You're like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, so then God. I had to split. And that's, so, so and now that's when I got started selling the angel dust in Forest Park. I said, and now, and now you're an accountant, right? <laughs> yeah, no, now I was, uh, <laughs> I was, <laughs> Nah, that, then after that, I started selling dust, and that's the case that I got busted for at Forest Park at the Dome. And that's then, the one that sent me up north. I went to Spofford for three months and then 21 months upstate. Upstate where? Uh, Lincolndale. Oh. It was like everything from attempted murder on down. And so what, what was your life like in there? And did you have any kind of training? Fighting every fucking day. Spofford, the moment I walked in there, it was like, so you don't dude fight. tried to step to me. I was in B3, which is intermediate, you know, but I, I went in lockup at 135 pounds. When I came out after two years, I was 165 boxing. Uh, you know, I put, I got, like they say, you got to get your weight up. And you're the only white kid in Spofford. Only I'm white kid in Spofford. Wow. And at Target, as soon as I went in there, the biggest dude, we were in uh, indoctrination, you know, where they take all your clothes, whatever the fuck, and then put, you know, strip search you. And then the dude is like, yo, you're going to be my Maytag when we get to the floor. I said, man, because the cops told me, yo, if anybody, it was two Irish cops, I got sent from Kew Garden Central Booking. And they knew who my father was. Because my father was a famous Irish boxer. Then they were like, McGowan, is that John Shorty McGowan out of Astoria? I was like, yeah. McGowan, yeah. And they were like, yo, anybody fucks with you, you got to give it right back to them, right? So this dude's like, yo, you're going to be my fucking Maytag. That means like, you know. Yeah. And I go, <laughs> nah, you're going to be my Maytag, motherfucker. And the dude was like, you know, brolic. And Everybody started laughing. So I said to the Puerto Rican dude next to me, I go, yo, what did I just say to that dude? What, what the fuck's a Maytag? He's like, yo, you just told that big motherfucker you're gonna have to like, he's gonna have to watch your sneakers, your drawers, suck your dick, like all this fuck. I was like, yo. As soon as I got to the wing that night, man, he was in there with me and the beef. I had, I had to bang him out with a chair. But that's the whole thing. I was willing to fucking go trade blows with anybody, fight anybody. That's that, that's that Irish blood. I fought some of you they guys. They called me Mighty Whitey, you know, and I was just, <laughs> I swear to God, and I was a kid, you know, but I, I would just fight. And then I was working out, eating three squares, 
fucking, you know. Did anybody anybody kind of school you, you know, to the rules? Or the, or the, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, some brothers and shit like that. And then I helped this dude, Orlando, sneak off. I never forget him because Orlando and Orlando Don, like the fucking group back then. So I remembered his name. But he was getting ready to do serious time uh, in Spoppy. They, they had him there for murder. And he was going to do serious time. So he knew the one gate on the bus that goes from Spofford, there's one window, it's an emergency window, but if you kicked it the right fucking way, the whole fucking window came off. Because this other dude told him. So he goes, yo, I want you to sit next to me on the bus, and then I'm going to jump up when I do, just stand in the aisle so the, the CO can't get me, you know? So... You know, but he became like, he was a good friend of mine prior to that. So he showed me the ropes, you know, play the wall. Like if shit goes down, that's what they tell you. Yo, you got to play the wall. You got to keep your back to the fucking wall. You don't let nobody behind you. You fight off the wall. And like all that type shit, you know, don't let people fuck with you. You know, like when people are trying to, it's all a mental game. They try to get, you know, so, like one up on you, but and so, you, so can you just tell everybody what Spofford is? For oh, it was uh, a juvenile detention facility, but it was twenty one and under. Oh, was twenty one and under? Twenty one and under, twenty one over twenty one. You went to Rikers. This was twenty one and under when I went in in seventy eight, and you had grown ass men running shit on kids, like. It was it was crazy, and I was the only white kid in the entire fucking place when I was there. And let me set the stage for you. Roots was on TV. Oh, no. And the Five Percenters, which is the radical part of the Nation of Islam, had taken over the correctional facility all in New York State. Oh, wow. So anybody that was white was Yaku, the white devil, and basically tried to step to me when I was in Spofford and upstate as well. But, you know, like I said, live and learn. Like, it, you know, it's- how, how was it when you got up to, so when you when finally went upstate, how was that different from Spofford? Well, uh, it had more programs to better yourself. Spofford's like Rikers. That's why people, when they go to Rikers, they don't want to catch a case in Rikers. You want to get, if you know you're going away, you want to, Get your court date. You don't want to catch any more cases in Rikers because they could keep you there now. I think it's, it used to be a year, but I think it's like two years now. But like, when you get upstate, that's when you can work your program. You know, they got physical fitness. You could take courses. You could do all that stuff that you can't do in Rikers. Rikers is just basically keeping you in a fucking cell. That's how Spofford was. You go to your floor and you just chill on the floor but they restrict the movements. They got bed counts. They lock you in your fucking cell at night and lock you in your cell in the daytime. They do head counts. Anybody ever get out of Spofford? Huh? Does anybody ever like escape or anything? Not like over the wall, but I got this guy, like I was telling you, Orlando, that motherfucker jumped up and lay, lay down on the chair and with both legs, kicked the gate. You know, the buses, the prison buses got these gates. That whole shit, boom, just went out. And then the, the fucking COs come running down the aisle. And I jumped in the aisle. And they're like, get the fuck out of the way, trying to grab me. And I'm acting like, yo, yo. And just like weeble wobbling to prevent them. <laughs> and, I, and he got out that motherfucking window, man. Wow. And they caught him like a week later because his dumb ass went right back to his fucking neighborhood instead of going somewhere else. But I got major props for that. And then, like, but the CEOs were like, you helped him. You were involved. I said, what are you talking about? Like, I don't even talk to him. I was just trying to get out of the way, you know? Because <laughs> well, I went forward instead of going back, right? I went forward. Uh... It was in their path coming from the front. They sit in the front. Uh -huh. So they're like, well, why did you come forward? I said, I just was panicking. It was crazy. <laughs> but get, 
they couldn't get by the little bus aisle to fucking grab them. So I, I was, you know, and then I went back to the unit. Now I gotta, now I gotta fast forward from, from this to the fact that you are an athlete, a vegan, yeah. an advocate, like for, how, how do we get from there to here? All right, well, that was a 40-year journey that started when I got out of lockup in 80. I went into the Navy. I caught another case for drugs. So they offered me the Navy, the military, or go to back to jail because my mom was dating a Navy recruiter <coughs> at the time. And my mom had to be the one to get me released because they, they couldn't let somebody out of jail when you're under 21 that didn't have a legal guardian. So my mom had to sign me out. So I went to her, I caught shit right away. I, I, you know, we never were tight with each other. So I went and started selling drugs again and I got caught. But she was dating this Navy recruiter. He said, all right, listen, we're gonna squash this shit. I'll get this shit sealed. I know the cops, I know the DA. This is the deal we're gonna give you. You go four years military and we, the whole shit gets scrapped. So I went in. Well, that's where the whole change started, you see, because, like, my first trip, I went in the Navy and went to boot camp January 1980, right? January 3rd, right after New Year's. I went to boot camp high on angel dust. They fly you out of Fort Hamilton. My brother, who was also locked up, we went in on the buddy program. So wait, wait, we had wait, hold on, slow that up now. How are you getting drugs in the prison? In the prison? No, this was when I got out. Navy. Oh, this oh, was Navy. Navy. Oh, okay. I was going to boot camp. So no, I was in prison, people smuggled shit. Okay. That's how, and what happens is they get guards or whatever the fuck, but when you are short timer where I was, they want you to start going home to home visits to reestablish your relationship with your parents. So when I would go home, when people would go get those home visits, when they're short timers, they would smuggle shit back. You so that's what I did. I smuggled. Okay, hold up. Now we got to talk about smuggle. What smuggle mean? How do they, how do they get it in? Oh, I'll tell you how I got mine in. I rolled up joints, right? They don't got dogs. So this is how I did my shit. Ah, you like that content, huh? Well, guess what? Go over to our website, www.myskinnybuddha.com, and you can see the full video. Plus, there's lots more food, fitness, and interviews for you to check out over there. Hurry up. Get over there. <laughs>